and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that isn't afraid to dump inordinate amounts of money into incredibly dumb things. Now, a long, long time ago, definitely pre-archive, I developed a, some would say slightly deranged, taste for obsolete AV gear. See what happens, Mom and Dad, when you don't let your kid have that damn laser disc player? Anyway, uh, in my admittedly still ongoing quest to round up all those uh, oddball video and audio formats and various other failed techie goodies, some items have proven to be far more elusive than others. Case in point, the Philips Compact Disc Interactive, or CDI. When you were a child and would walk into a toy store, it would look like it was the biggest store in the world. When I was a kid, there was this mall-like place just south of Denver called Incredible Universe. This place was a little slice of, hideously overpriced, AV and computer nerd paradise. You had the main commons area and a few stores, each devoted to stuff like music and movies, computers, and household appliances. In the aforementioned commons area, there was a stage. Here, I watched things like the CD-ROM and the 3DO get splashy sales pitches, complete with commission-hungry salesmen roaming the floor. Anyway, one of the things I saw there was the Philips Compact Disc Interactive, or CDI, system. If the sales pitch was to be believed, the CDI would soon supplant all existing home video, personal computer, and video game systems, locking everything into a VCR-sized gray brick albeit with a keyboard and mouse and gamepad, all sold separately, naturally. Of course, we never did purchase anything more than the odd video or audio tape at this place, but all the stuff we saw there managed to stick with me in the long haul, for better or worse. And music enters the digital age. Now Philips invents the Compact Disc Interactive. Along with RCA's CED, Selectivision Home Video Format, the Philips CDI is pretty much the poster child for a long, slow development period for an underwhelming product. As far back as 1984, Philips, who'd invented the compact disc, and Sony were working independently of each other, trying to create a variation on the CD that could include video and text, ultimately known generically as the Green Book Standard. As a side note, in 1988, the two companies joined forces for further developments, though the deal ultimately fell through. Anyway, in 1985, Matsushita, aka Panasonic, began work on the hardware side of things for a proposed new multimedia device. In 1986, the CDI was publicly announced, and the first prototypes of discs and players surfaced for industry insiders the following year. In 1988, the first CDI prototypes were sent to potential developers, which ultimately included LG and Grundig. For the next few years, the CDI seemed to get hung up in a seemingly never-ending series of legalities, revisions, and scrapped collaborations. The most notable of the latter being the task of developing a CD add-on prototype for Nintendo's then-unfinished Super Nintendo. On another side note, in the end, Philips did get the licensing from Nintendo to develop a few games featuring some of their characters, like the Super Mario Brothers and Zelda. If I can use it, anybody can. I mean, I can't even set my VCR. It's very sharp, it's very clear. Um, the wonderful photography that they've put in along with the, the graphics is tremendous. It's educational. In October of 1991, Philips finally issued the CDI, in North America only, in two variations. One for professional users, namely the 601 model, and one, much simpler version, for consumers. The consumer unit, according to a period New York Times article, sold for $1,000, $1,100 or more if you wanted the video cartridge, you know, to watch movies. Anyway, initially, Philips opted to chase the professional market, trying to get their systems into schools and some businesses. This proved to be unsuccessful. In 1993, Philips shifted its focus to the consumer end of things, advertising their product via, actually, this infomercial. It also proved unsuccessful. Interact. 
I get it. This is cool. All right, so try serving. Um, uh, what do I do? Just point and click. You're dancing to your favorite CD and someone says... I can see it, man! I can see it! And you're thinking... Loser! But actually, it's a premonition. It's CDI, friends! Next generation CD player that works with your TV! In 1994, Philips dropped the base price of the unit to $299. They also launched another new advertising campaign, this time drafting Saturday Night Live alum Phil Hartman as spokesman. Unsurprisingly, this did nothing to help sales. By 1996, Philips introduced an add-on modem for the CDI with a whopping 14.4K speed to allow for internet access at a cost of $150. Later in 1996, Philips announced that the system would be discontinued by the end of the year, though depending on your source, new units were commercially available as late as late 1998. Also depending on your source, the CDI sold anywhere between 570,000 and 1 million units worldwide. My money says it's on the lower end of that scale. In the end, Philips reportedly lost some $1 billion on the CDI project. A smarter man would spend his tax refund, assuming he's even lucky enough to get such a thing these days, on something smart, like paying some bills or something, but what do I do? I blow it on a professionally refurbished CDI. And here it is. And I hate to admit it, but over the years I have dumped about $400 into CDIs just trying to get them at least semi-functional. And recently it's just crawled up my ass to the point where I just said, to hell with it, I'm going to get one that works from somebody who actually knows what they're doing, and that's what I did. And it was a, a blow to my ego, because this would be the first thing in archive land that I have not been able to at least get back to semi-functionality by myself. But anyway, here it is. I'll show you as much as I can from the front in a bit here. But first, here's the remote. And I've accrued a few of these over the years. The thumbstick, which these things are absolutely horrible if you're trying to play a game or something or anything that involves hand-eye coordination. But if uh, it's just an educational title or a trivia game or something, it's okay. And if you're watching a movie, it really doesn't matter. Anyway, um, get this sucker going here. Ain't it pretty? And if I pull this flap down here, you've got some inputs here. You've got a spot for a wired controller, which, alas, I do not have one. Maybe someday. And there is a second one, but it ain't anywhere nearby. And in the center, we've got an eighth-inch headphone jack and a volume knob next to it. So it's a bit like the 3DO in that regard, although this is, of course, a bit older. And there you go. Let's take a look at the back here just so you can uh, get a better look at everything here and we have got just quickly going through it AC we've got uh, finally at long last the second controller input I have no idea why they did it that way and we have it says RCA remote this orange port here that I'm going around and I've never seen a remote that runs on something like that I guess I'll have to turn in my AV geek card for that and uh, anyway, we've got the classic yellow RCA out. We've got S-Video. We've got coax and a channel switch. We have RCA stereo out. And, of course, the big old hole for the digital video cartridge, which, because I love you all so much, I actually took it out just so you could take a look at it. And I don't know how many pins it is, but it's kind of a video gamey sort of thing. And you just pop it in, and there's a couple of screws that hold it in. And I've noticed that it comes loose fairly easily, so I've already had to take my working unit and pop the cartridge out and back in just to keep it working the way it should. I That's kind of a pain in the ass, but anyway, that's it. In 
It seems like over the last several years, the gaming community has managed to really latch onto the CDI, and in doing so, I think they've managed to distort people's perception of the thing, and I think it's a bit unfair, so what I'd like to do with most of today's episode is to put things back in perspective here. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a half-baked gaming console, and yes, the CDI had its problems, to say the least, but again, to write it off as a half-baked gaming console is really selling it short. I mean, uh, it was also a half-baked home video unit, and uh, a half-baked personal computer. You know, CDI can bring you a variety of experiences, like education, entertainment, enrichment. You can watch a movie, but that's not all. You can play that romantic CD and dance with your wife by moonlight. See what I mean? Anyway, uh, like the 3DO, the CDI will play your music CDs, and it'll also play those CDG discs that we talked about on that episode. But more important is the CDI's capabilities as a home video unit. Now, early on, the CDI was actually, for all intents and purposes, a proprietary format. I mean, they made discs according to the Green Book standard that I very briefly mentioned earlier, and these discs will only play in a CDI player, and this had more to do with the fact that, for all intents and purposes, again, the standard video CD or VCD format just hadn't quite been solidified yet, but Philips wanted their thing out on the market, and they got it, and they just put out their own discs that will only play on a CDI. Now, once the VCD standard really got flattened, so to speak, they revised their setup and they conformed to that standard. And these later CDI movie discs you can play in most computers, Blu-ray players, and some DVD players. And the easiest way to figure out if this is one of those titles is by seeing if it has this kind of radioactive green stripe on it. It says movies. And uh, you don't need a CDI player, so if you want to do a little collecting just for the hell of it and still want to be able to use it, you know, if you can find any of these, it'll do you. And it'll also usually say something to the effect of compact disc video or something. I mean, uh, this one says video CD in the bottom right corner. But uh, anyway, I'm sure you'd like to see some clips of the basic old school Green Book standard discs. And I will show them to you, and uh, you're going to be very disappointed because it's just a VCD, meaning it's about on par with a decent VHS tape. My name is Sergeant Frank Drebin, Detective Lieutenant Police Squad. I was in the middle of getting my car washed when I heard the call over the police scanner. There had been a bombing downtown, and I was on my way to advise the DC police as part of the president's Operation Scum Roundup. In the CDI's quest to become that low-level personal computer that anyone could use, they unsurprisingly put out a lot of educational stuff. And of course a lot of that stuff was for kids, and it follows all those chintzy early 90s stereotypes that you'd expect. I'm not going to discuss the stuff for kids, because in my opinion it's the adult stuff where the CDI really gets its turn to shine. So, with that in mind, uh, who's up for some gardening? Oh, who am I kidding? Uh, this is way too hardcore for the likes of you.
Roses are usually grown by themselves in beds or borders. They are particularly happy in island-like beds where they get good air circulation that helps prevent mildew. It's a good idea to keep them away from a solid wall or fence. Roses can be mixed in with other plants. Okay, so maybe just a good old-fashioned book would have been the better option there, but anyway, moving on. I know I'm not going to get away without at least touching on some of the games released for the CDI, but here's the thing. I am not going to discuss Hotel Mario or any of the three Zelda games released for the CDI because, one, they're very well trodden, and two, to me, they're just really not all that interesting. So what we're going to do here is we're going to touch on what I think is more representative of the broader spectrum of the CDI's games, which basically means bouncing back and forth between the bizarre, the boring, and the downright lazy. Fasten your seatbelt. The void is in great danger, warrior. The Star Lord Sabadon has violated cosmic law by manifesting himself in the material plane. He is a being of great greed. He wants to hold the void in the palm of his hand, to carry it like a jewel. To achieve this, he has created a diabolic machine. Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! Mm -hmm. It's me! Mm -hmm. Bob! Bob! On Tecton, you must learn the four Analects of Confusion and attempt to make contact with the variable. returns to taste my brew. I'm sure he wears an amulet. It is the family seal. If you meet him, say Raman to him. If he... What's this? Another star man! By Sisis, where is the hero promised by prophecy? I am sworn to sing only the first verse of the Sooth Song. Our mother, Sisis, is our source. She blesses, heals, and feeds. That was then. And this is now. Hey, greetings, putters. I'm Rollo the Goofball. <laughs> I mean, golf ball. Welcome to Wacky Golf, the miniature golf theme park that picks up where the other golf courses leave off. You're about to enter a fully enclosed, climate-controlled marvel of CDI mini-golf technology, and I'll be your guide.
It's time for Name That Tune, and here's a man who needs no introduction, so we won't give him one. Hi, I'm Bob Goen, and I'm your host as we get set to play Name That Tune. You picked O oh Brother. These are tunes beginning with the letter O. For 150 points, Ready, set, name that tune. A hit for George Benson and the Drifters on Broadway. Did you get it right? If I could, Red Player, I'd pat you on the back. Now, of course, in the 3DO episode, we discussed some of the adult titles released for that thing. Well, I have one adult title for the CDI, and here it is, Strip Poker Live, and uh, I don't think I need to tell you what that's about. But I was pretty happy to find this one in that, I agree, it seems like a lot of the stuff we've discussed on Archive over the years, it objectifies women. And so with this one, you can kind of go in any direction. You can be a man playing against a woman, woman against man, you can do whatever you want with it. But it was also a real downer, because this may actually be the most sexist thing I've ever seen. In that, if you're a man playing against a woman, at least as far as the computer's concerned, you have four women to choose from. Most of them aren't wearing much to begin with. And it you can play the worst game of poker in the world, and within 15 minutes you got her nude. Now, as for the ladies, you get one scrawny, pasty-ass guy to choose from, and suddenly it becomes the most difficult game in the world. I mean, I was determined, and I am happy to report that I succeeded. I have got something that objectifies men. It took me three grueling hours to do so, and it took every last bit of luck and skill I've got, but I was finally able to get something for the ladies. And so, again, ladies, this one's for you. Hi, who would you like to play with? Thanks for choosing me. We'll have lots of fun together. I'll raise you 15. You won! I must sell some clothing. What are you going to do? I'll raise you ten. You won! I must sell some clothing. I'll raise you 20. You won! I must sell some clothing. What 
are you going to do? I'll call. You won. I must sell some clothing. Do you want to play further? Do you want to play further? What are you going to do? I'll raise you twenty. You won. I must sell some clothing. A few years ago, during our Top Turkeys episode, we touched on the CDI, and at the end of that episode, I jokingly threatened to find a working CDI and to try and mutilate the CDI's, as far as I know, only interactive album into uh, listenability. That album is this one, No World Order, from Todd Rundgren, from 1993, and, uh, excuse me, TRI, Todd Rundgren Interactive. You weren't supposed to just call him Todd anymore. But uh, I, I've never liked this album. I'll come flat out and say it. But, uh, you know, uh, did the world really need to hear the Hello, It's Me guy try to rap? Let me tell you about the New World Order. Not the kind to make you run for the border. It's a new religion wrapped in a revolution with a proven solution for your mental pollution. Anyway, I think I had my hopes just a little too high for this release because... In my mind, an interactive album would be something where you could basically just have access to the multi-tracks. You could go back and remix the thing. Or maybe you could uh, somehow digitally speed up or slow down the record or something, especially since most of it was made using electronic stuff anyway, as opposed to proper instruments. But, oh man, did I have my sights way too high. This album supposedly has something like 15,000 points of customization, and... I just don't think so. What you have is a basic program with a list of things like tempo and mood and such, and just a few choices within each sub-menu. So you'd go and you'd put your little specifications into the album, but instead of really truly customizing it, it just goes and boils the album farther and farther and farther down. So once you put in a full list of specifications, what you're left with invariably is just maybe a minute or so of just usually very dull music, just looping in infinity. Take a look. All right, so here we are with what's sadly pretty much the only way to effectively demonstrate something like this, and uh, that's with the camcorder pointed at the TV and a microphone that I can talk into, and I'll have to crank the music at times so you can actually hear it. But here we are, CDI startup screen. I got the disc in the tray. Let's get it going here. And there's a bit of a load time. And uh, initially you'll get the basic screen for uh, one of the album covers. There it is. And after a few seconds, some music gets started. Then you can start playing with it. All right, there it is. That's about as interesting as this record gets, the intro. Alright, so let's start playing with this thing. 
you have a bunch of options here, and this first one is program, which means just playing some predetermined mix of the record done by Todd himself, or Jerry Harrison, or Bob Clearmountain, or one of those guys. But let's start trying to customize it a bit here. So let's start with the direction. And we'll try and make this pretty obvious. We'll start with reverse, I guess. So it'll be reverse chunks of music. Not necessarily as if it were playing backwards, but you'd play track 12, then 11, then 10, then 9. So form. We'll go easy. Conservative. Tempo. You can narrow it down. That's what we're going to do here. If I can get there. Alright, so let's go as obvious as we can here. Slowest mood. We'll zero in on a mood here. Uh, since it's slow, I guess we should go sad. And there's a four bar delay between pretty much every move that you make here. Alright, and mix. Let's try and make it karaoke so it's theoretically instrumental, all instrumental, or at least uh, no lead vocal. All right, karaoke. So this is what we got. And we have like three options for just generic video to play for this thing. So I guess I'll get one of those going. All right, let's see what we get here. Nothing super special, but every time you make a decision and you add more and more to your demands, it just narrows down the album that much more. So with all the demands we've made, we've probably boiled this whole album down at an hour plus to maybe about a minute. So uh, let me turn the volume back up and we'll go through the tracks that it's allowed for us to play. It's the same one. Yeah. Not the most versatile thing in the world. Alright, let's try and just go in the absolute opposite direction. We'll go thick. Mood. We'll go bright. Tempo. Let's go fast. Direction very fast forward. That sounds the most extreme. And we'll give it a different video here. Alright, swarm. Let's see what we get. Next track. Are you noticing a pattern here? Okay, it's a little different, but it's just the same bits. Okay, there's your weird. There you go. Wasn't that so worth $500 minimum? To me, the CDI was long on ambition, long on good intentions, but in the end, just short on achievement. Now, having said that, when they got it right, they really got it right. I mean, the Sony PlayStation ultimately had video and some internet capability, so, you know, the CDI, in my opinion, was just a little ahead of its time in that regard. And really, with a lot of gaming consoles from about 2000 on, they all seem to have that sort of stuff now. It's just the norm, but, you know, somebody had to get the door open. But unfortunately, the price of that usually means that you become an archivism. Anyway, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when we're joined by Phil, you know, the uh, perpetually befuddled dad from the CDI infomercial, who will school us on the finer points of tennis for the CDI.
Yeah! Give me some sugar! Yeah!